So within the Chronic Malignancy Working Party at EBMT, we've done a lot of work focusing on the more common myeloproliferative neoplasms and also the uncommon myeloproliferative neoplasms. So we've recently published on a very large cohort of patients with both primary and secondary myelofibrosis, uh, collected over a decade of patients who've been enrolled from many centres across the EU, and really looking at the role of transplant conditioning. So we know that unfortunately many patients with myelofibrosis are excluded from transplantation because of the natural age of onset of the disorder. Maybe they lack a suitable donor, but what we really wanted to look at was how patients who underwent transplant did the role of conditioning play a role. Because sometimes if we have a patient who is very fit, maybe in their 47 or 48 years of age, do we pick a myeloablative transplant or do we pick a reduced intensity transplant? So. This was a very large cohort of patients, underwent a very heterogeneous group of conditioning regimens, but really it focused us on looking at the outcomes from what is historically a very rare indication for transplantation. We probably in Europe do around five to 600 cases of transplant for myelofibrosis, but that's versus maybe 10,000 transplants for patients with acute leukemia. And what it showed us was is that we're seeing similar results for patients who are having a transplant conditioned with either fludarabine and busulfan or fludarabine and melphalan. Um, and we're seeing that maybe their overall survival of three years is very similar. So there's still a debate about what is the best platform for transplant in the reduced intensity setting. Many centres are using what historically uh, was conveyed from a study that was published um, 10 years ago that looked at fludarabine, busulfan and ATG, and that's our current preferred regimen for patients undergoing reduced intensity transplant. We know that with myeloablative approaches, we're seeing good overall survival, but unfortunately higher rates of acute graft-versus-host disease.